Hey everyone, I'm Mrs. Vegan and this is Mr. Vegan. We are here again with Dr. Khan. So we're back with a controversial topic that needs a doctor's approval, the coconut, coconut conspiracy. conspiracy. <laughs> so Dr. Khan, how did we get from peace, love, and coconuts to coconut oil, 75% off, external use only. I know, we can't even buy it anymore, and we shouldn't buy it anymore, but a few stores are actually waking up and say, use it on your skin, just don't put it in your body. How'd we get there? Well, it's always going to be money in the industry and deception and confusion, but when we had to take trans fats out of food, because they're really bad, they drive up your blood sugar and heart disease, they started putting coconut oil in everything, and then a couple real good shysters started selling it on the web in a way that sounds so attractive and appealing. And it's a conspiracy the world's falling for, a fast track to poor health and obesity. Don't fall for it. So in 2004, a balloon sculptor wrote a book called Coconut Miracle. He's a professional clown. And his book happened to coincide with these trans fat bands, and it pushed the coconut from a rare tropical oil to a miracle. When you're processing all these coconuts to get all this coconut oil, what happens to the rest of the stuff? Exactly, the, the, the meat, the carb, the, the water. protein, the water. When you were growing up, did you have any of these products? None. Well, none. Because I have to tell you, these are all my products. I have, I'm a coconut aholic. Like, I sit around and eat coconut chips. I put coconut in my hair. Coconut. I put coconut on my oatmeal butter. Oh, I put coconut oil. How many of you use coconut sugar, coconut aminos? Yeah. I, I use it. You go the into Starbucks, coconut chips everywhere now. And all, all yeah. of you doing coconut pulling? Guess who wrote that book? The balloon animal clown as well. Oh, I do coconut pulling. I believe it. And you believe in a clown. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put him up on the screen here too. The American Heart Association published this really important document. They don't do right. it very often. Right. It lambasts saturated fat, which they've been doing since the 1960s. Right. And there was one line about coconut oil in this giant article. And is coconut oil the problem or maybe something else Americans are eating? Yeah. So the question is, do you listen to the balloon guy or do you listen to 12 really heavy hitting scientists? They're older men and older women, but you know, at Harvard, Northwestern, they're pretty good places. There's no balloon dispensaries at Harvard. <laughs> I don't think so. And so the president of the American Heart Association asked 12 scientists, and they're not in the coconut growing business. These are scientists. You know, look at the data and let's get to the real bottom line. Maybe we missed it on saturated fat. Maybe it's suddenly good after nearly 100 years of data says that excess saturated fat in your diet drives your cholesterol up. And as your blood cholesterol goes up, your arteries get clogged and you become old fast and your skin gets wrinkly and all kinds of terrible things. Um, and they looked at that and they put 25 pages of data out. 24 and a half pages were about don't eat butter, don't eat lard, don't eat red meat and chicken saturated fat rich foods to excess or maybe at all and that one paragraph that said we're searching and all we can find is the balloon guy giving us any data on coconut oil and since we can't find benefit and since it has more saturated fat than a piece of red beef we'd advise you don't use coconut oil in your diet until more data is available until the balloon guy does the study but the balloon guy as far as i know is not a professor at harvard so it's not likely he's going to provide this. And don't cook your meat with coconut oil either. That'd probably that, would be a, <laughs> that would be a balloon <laughs> a tick thing to do. <laughs> oh, Thank you. Balloon that tick. On my feet. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of conspiracies trying to pull saturated fat back into the diet, the butter and the coffee. Right. Has there been any place in the world where they've actually really implemented this concept of getting saturated fat out of the diet and what did it do with heart disease? Yeah, there's this great example because, you know, the bad example is America where we have a lot of saturated fat from cheese, butter, full fat, dairy, whole milk, and red meat, red meat, and white meat has nearly as much, nearly as much in chicken and fish. So it turns out there was a country that was having a major heart attack problem. I'm a heart doctor. In the late 1960s in Finland, you're 40 years old, you're a lumberjack, you're dead of a heart attack. You're 45 years old, you're working uh, you know, in the fields as a farmer, you're dropping dead of a heart attack. It was a huge problem and it was impacting the economy because these were 42, 45 year olds and there was not much obesity in Finland. This was an unexpected rise over about five years. And what, what came out of it is they looked at their diet. It was the highest dietary saturated fat country in the world and the highest heart attack rate country in the world. Coincidence? 
Probably not. So they got a bunch of scientists together and said, can we teach the public? Can we put posters in the post office, posters in the grocery store, posters in the library? Can we get restaurants and food companies? Grocery stores. They want Grocery yeah. stores to suggest change your milk from 100% whole fat milk to maybe skim milk. Don't eat 10 pads of butter a day. Maybe substitute uh, mustard on your sandwich instead of, and literally they were doing 10 pads of butter a day. <sighs> cut that cheese down, cut that red meat down. And they picked a part of Finland called North Karelia. You'll be tested on this later, write that down. <laughs> and it turns out what happened five years later, it was magical. People actually listened. They cut their full fat dairy, so we're talking about milk, butter, cheese down 60%. They did some other good things. They started eating a bit more fruit. They started smoking less. 80% drop in heart attack Whoa. rate. It's like they turned the country around, you know, very quickly. And they started in this one corner of Finland close to Russia where they were the worst eaters of all of Finland. Then they spread the same program, very inexpensive program, public education, just like this is. And they I think they, cut, built, they built some tracks or something so people could walk, walk more. Yeah, but yeah. The, I assure you, the single biggest change in Finland, and I bring this to you from both the researchers and the head of the public uh, health division at Harvard, was dropping dietary saturated fat, which means eating less animals of every kind. Eating less dairy animals, eating less meat animals, eating less cheese. And the country to this day has nowhere near that rate of these tragic young people dying. It's it's, there, there wasn't anything else. Their genes didn't change. It wasn't GMO. This was all pre-GMO issues. It was common sense. And, you know, there so is... How, how did it make it back to the cover of Time Magazine? How did they start putting butter in the coffee? What happened? Yeah, so there's two studies that are used, I think totally inappropriately, and scientists generally feel totally inappropriately, 2010, 2014, that questioned how strong the relationship was between dietary saturated fat and ultimately developing a high cholesterol and a high heart attack rate. Those studies have been lambasted, but you know, it's like they say, if you take a pillow, a feather pillow, rip it open and spread it out, go get all the feathers. Once the word's out, there's almost no way to pull that scientific data back in. Both studies have been criticized for their flaws. One study, the very same journal edition that was published, the 2010 study, had a severe criticism in the, in the journal. It said, wrong, 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 wrong. The word's out. And the 2014 study was so bad that Harvard School of Public Health demanded, just withdraw that. It's garbage analysis. But that's what got butter on the cover. Two bogus studies that weren't original research whereas there's been over 60 years of research, a lot of it led by a very famous guy named Dr. Ansel Keys, who's proving to be absolutely right 10 years after and his death. He is being the, maligned he's, after his he's death. Not he's, yeah, he's not the balloon guy. He's like the leading research scientist in the world who died at age 100, almost 101. Not I think I'm going to listen to him. <laughs> exactly. You know, he didn't need to sell balloons to make a living. He just was a good scientist that uh, lived in Italy half a year and lived in Minneapolis half a year every year. And he suggested decades ago, you know, when my parents were being born, that saturated fat in the diet might be the issue. And here's the American Heart Association, you know, 60 years later saying, bullseye, nothing authentic science has changed. In fact, if you'll eat less butter, cheese, meat, you and your family and your parents, you will avoid my disease, which is waking up at 3 in the morning to try and keep you alive during a heart attack. I'm tired of doing that. Just eat less butter, eat less cheese, eat less meat, or none at all is really the best but the question is that I know a lot of vegans like avocado, coconut, tahini, right. all the fats that us vegans love, how much of those can you eat without having a problem? Well, there's only a few plant-based sources that are high in saturated fat, and there's very few. And the, the one we're talking about today is the yeah. king of the world, the, uh, the coconut balloon story as we're talking, the coconut conspiracy. You know, it's coconut oil, so they've, it's not a coconut. Number one, there are no coconuts growing in the Mediterranean basin, so there are people confusing us that they're using coconut oil all through Italy. Well, not originally, maybe now in the grocery stores because the whole world's confused on this topic. But, you know, they're taking a coconut, they're pulling out all the fat and compressing it, and who knows what goes on with the milk and the meat, but that's not what we're getting. It's 82% saturated fat. That's double the amount of saturated fat in a marbled piece of beef. 
So when you get that nice white, it looks virginal, it looks like ice cream, that white coconut oil tub, it's 82% saturated fat. It's the highest way to get saturated fat in your body in the world. That's unusual because it's from a plant. And the Heart Association recommends under 7% of your diet and right. some other health experts say even less than 5%. From your total calories in the day from saturated fat. Now, if you're enjoying an avocado now and then, you're gonna get a few percent of your calories in your diet from saturated fat, nowhere near what, and remember, an avocado is an avocado food. oil, yeah. exactly. If you're dumping avocado oil on everything, which I do not advise as a heart specialist, you're gonna bump up that fat and saturated fat rate. Coconut oil is, if your goal is to reduce saturated fat, the American Heart Association made a very reasonable statement. Hey, there's a bunch of really weak science. In fact, seven studies looked at eating coconut oil, what it does to your cholesterol. They, it goes up in every one of those studies and it was statistically significant. Strong word, but the science said, whoa, if you eat coconut oil. So why are we doing it? We don't want a high cholesterol. It's not necessary in your body. It keeps my office very busy, however, but don't do it. So Ansel Keys had all this information in the 60s. The 1980s, the food industry in the United States applied it in a very stupid way. <laughs> he came out with everything with fat free. Right. Do you remember right. that? Like, I remember mom brought, she would only buy Snackwell's fat free cookies, but they weren't fat free at all. They, they just added more sugar to yeah. make the percent of fat lower, but your total fat was the same, and you just added more sugar yeah. to it to make it appear low fat. So everybody out there thinks the low fat diet failed. I mean, I'm telling you, all day long I hear, I did the low-fat diet, I gained a bunch of weight, what went wrong? Right. And, you know, the, the snack well cookie, which you don't even see anymore, <laughs> no, do they? but there's still plenty of examples like that on the shelves everywhere. They're breakfast cereals and they're granolas yeah. where, you know, the sugar, they added sugar content. It's a refined grain. Again, we don't want to process our food. We want to eat whole food. So, you know, you're, we're taking white flour to make a cookie. We're adding tons of added sugar, but there's no added fats to it. So it got a label on it that looked like this was the uh, the health food of the 1970s and 80s, and it never was the scientist's recommendation. You know, Ansel Keys wrote three cookbooks that in the 60s and 70s were selling like crazy all through the New York Times and all. His cookbooks specifically say don't add sugar to these recipes in many of the places. So, you know, the right people got the right message, but then the food industry just distorted it because we are addicted people. We love sugar. We love the feel of fat in our mouth, even if it's very unhealthy. And we've learned to just retrain our mouth to love the good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we don't restrict, we replace. Mm -hmm. That's Absolutely. the really good. So good what, tasty stuff. What's everybody supposed to eat? When somebody comes into your office, they've had a heart attack, what do you tell them to do? Yeah, so actually, you know, it's relevant. There was a study out just this week in my medical journals, but if you read the headlines in the internet, it might have popped up somewhere. That, uh, again, I go back, Harvard School of Public Health, not the balloon, not, the, know, balloon not the balloon guy, okay? <laughs> Your parents and you need to listen to Harvard School of Public Health, not the balloon guy. <laughs> and um, they took over 200,000 doctors and nurses that were asked in the 1980s, do you have any heart disease? The answer for all 200,000 was no, I don't. They did very detailed questions of what they ate, and they repeated that about every four years to get updated data. And they were able to tease out that those that ate a predominantly plant-based diet, yay, sounds good, had a lower risk of having a heart attack and heart disease by about 8%. So that's like 100,000 people in the United States don't need to call an ambulance and be at risk of dying, but listen, if their diet was the junky plant-based diet, rich in sweets, rich in refined grains, rich in added oils and sugar, they actually did not experience that benefit. Whoa, so what should they eat? If they answered, I eat beans, lentils, chickpeas, fruits, vegetables, I drink water and green tea, and 100% whole grains. That actually was the answer. They actually slashed their heart disease risk by 25%. This is the largest database that looks at whether you need to eat a quality WSLF diet or a junky, you know, Pringles kind of diet. Don't do the junk vegan thing. Do the whole foods vegan thing. And just to put it into perspective, number one killer in the United States, both men and women, is unfortunately ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. Your ticker stops ticking and you drop dead. And there are people in their 30s and 40s having heart attacks, which is just. 
And Our friends have had heart attacks. We have had friends have yeah, strokes, strokes, strokes too. Tra strokes are going yeah. up in people 25 to 30 faster than any other group. That's and, insane. And so a lot of people don't know, what's the number one cause of death in the Mediterranean? Hmm. Western country, <laughs> it's got to be the ticker, heart disease. So it's just crazy that they recommend the Mediterranean diet because a little bit less people die of heart disease, but it's still the number one cause of death. So even though it's a step better, it might be really just less worse. You know, and there's, <laughs> there's more balloon salesmen out there now, but sometimes they even are cardiologists. So there is a cardiologist from England right now that's got his version of the Mediterranean diet. Are you ready? You take the Mediterranean diet, you take the grains out, the 100% whole grains that are so good for you, WSLF, you put in coconut oil. And he's got a book out in the past two weeks that says this is that thing you should be eating. Oh, so it's not only going to uh, keep heart attacks in the Mediterranean basin. If anybody actually bought and followed this book, they're going to go up. It's wow. That's why you need to watch this channel. Get the real news. <laughs> yeah. Share listen, it around. Yeah, listen to doctors who cure people, who help people. You've got a whole selection of patients. They go and they eat at your restaurant, Green Space Cafe in Detroit, Michigan. Tell me about your patients over the history that have adopted this plant-based diet. They're, they're still alive. Yeah, they're, they're, actually we've developed this group in Detroit. Detroit, who likes Detroit? I do. Um, <laughs> so we've got a group of 4,000 patients that get together about every six weeks. It's called the Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group. And then we just meet and we get together, but there's so many of us now, we fill a whole high school auditorium. Wow. And, People like Dr. Neil Barnard come and great stuff. And um, there are people every week we get together every month that have lost 50 pounds, 100 pounds, that don't take diabetic medicines, that no longer have heart symptoms. Probably also some heart of them, Some of them, their too. psoriasis is gone, their rheumatoid arthritis is improved. We have one lady, her lupus, which is a kind of disease uh, of your connective tissues, has improved. So many examples. And, and some are just hooking up and finding somebody vegan today. Oh, which is yeah. fun. Yay, yay for love. So yes, we see amazing things going on with adopting a WSLF diet and there's no coconut oil recommended at our So meetings. I mean, this is just like kind of what happened in Finland in the 1960s. Whole communities gathered together and made the change together, supported each other. And you're doing that in Michigan. Yep. We're doing that here in Los Angeles. Oh, we're and doing all that on over YouTube. We're doing that on YouTube, but everybody's <laughs> doing this. These, these, you know, healthy communities are, are sprouting up everywhere and you know videos like this need to be shared and people need to get together and we need to and start your own community yeah. yeah absolutely that's the thing you just need a small little group of people and you know you, you got to get the right information because it is <coughs> there's balloon guys everywhere there really are and they're misleading us and when they say md or phd or they just, you know, look good with their shirt off because there's a lot of those. <laughs> just ignore that because I always ask them, tell me what you're looking like inside. You know, that's the only thing that matters for good health. Although we do all want to look good. <laughs> and a plant-based diet will give you better skin than any other diet. And don't forget to join our community on Facebook, the WSLA Facebook group. So. And also, you have to follow Dr. Khan. He posts all the happenings that are going on in the health-based world. Mm -hmm. Sometimes angry. I get angry yeah. at these <laughs> balloon guys. I do. I call them out and you know, want to shut their voices down. It's very hard to you're, do You're that. firing back on Twitter. You're, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I feel it's like uh, that uh, movie uh, Top Gun. You know, we're engaging, <laughs> but I know how to pull the trigger just right. So, uh, just reiterating, can we eat the coconut chips? I say no. I say <laughs> grab an apple, grab an orange, <laughs> grab a banana. Like, can you drink coconut water? Why would you? Just drink water. <laughs> Can you put coconut on your hair for yeah. coconut curls? I'm going to give all of you a, a pass there. Just don't <laughs> suck the ends of your hair. Yes. I'm going to say if you've got a, like a whole pantry full of coconut oil <laughs> and you watch this and say, what am I doing with it? Feed it to your dog. Honestly, <laughs> dogs don't get heart attacks. They're resistant. Dogs yeah. don't. Oh. Dogs don't. They have a different GI system. They have a different physiology. They can eat you know, high fat foods. We're not dogs. I don't want to break the news to you. Love or, or, your dog. Cat, or cats. We're not cats. Yeah. So if you had to do it, just use it up in a way that I don't even want you to give it to your neighbor because that's not like really a nice gift. You know, give them an uh, a, a invitation to watch this uh, YouTube channel. Don't give them your used <laughs> coconut oil, but uh, well, feed it to your dog. Thank you so much, Dr. Khan, for coming back to our channel. And we hope everybody out there follows Dr. Khan. Links below. And Next time, we'd like to see some comments about what you'd like to hear from Dr. Cowan. The coconut conspiracy is dead! <laughs> oh, you have to go throw away your coconut chips. <laughs>